In the real estate market, many of us would have heard of joint development properties or joint ventures. But I am sure that many of them have a lot of confusion related to this topic. Today, in this video, I will mention some of the most important points related to the joint venture or the joint development properties. Hello friends, my name is Balaji Badrinath and I welcome you to my channel today. If you are new here, please click the subscribe now button and tap the bell icon so that I can notify you whenever I post my new videos. So what is joint venture? A joint venture is a business that is formed when two businesses join forces and use their diverse skill sets to achieve a shared commercial goal. So what is joint venture property development? A joint venture is a temporary but formalized cooperation of builders, finance companies and developers who contract with each other for a specific development project such as a housing estate, generally by forming a temporary subsidiary business. So joint venture is a common word used in many businesses, which is an agreement between any two bodies, whereas joint development agreement is a term only specific to real estate development. A joint uh, development agreement, on the other hand, does not involve any business sharing. Instead, it is defined as making a contribution to a company. The real estate project could be in the form of an industrial township, a commercial complex, a residential township or a group housing society among other things. A real estate project often takes several years to design and complete. The paradigm of joint development arrangement has arisen as a common model for real estate development in which a landowner and a developer pool their resources and efforts. In a typical joint development agreement, the landowner provides his land and enters into a contract with the developer to develop and build a real estate project at the developer's expense. As a result, the landowner contributes land while the developer bears the expenses of the development and the building. Depending on the terms and conditions agreed upon, the landowner may receive compensation in the form of a flat sum payment and a percentage of the sales revenue or a specified proportion of the project's constructed area. In this way, the landowners and the developers' resources and efforts are combined to produce the most productive result possible. The cost of land in a real estate project accounts for a significant portion of the entire project cost. In such an arrangement, the developer is relieved of the need to spend on land acquisition at the outset allowing him to focus on project development with limited resources in a more efficient manner. On the other side, a landowner who may lack the necessary skills and expertise to build the project receives a higher price for his land than he would have received if he sold it outright. As a result, the joint venture development utilizes the resources from both sources and produces the outcome. In fact, it can be said that the joint development arrangement is a commercial arrangement of convenience. So what are the different types of joint development agreement? Different types of cooperative development arrangements have evolved over time as the real estate business has grown. The rise in land prices has also aided the emergence of cooperative development agreements for the development of real estate. Various types of cooperative development agreements that are seen in practice includes the following. The owner of an old house may be tempted to modernize the property by adding more floor space including a basement and a stilt area which may have been permitted by the regulatory authorities. In this situation, the owner gives the house to the developer for construction and then the floors are built and shared by both parties. In some cases, the developer may also provide monetary compensation and an alternative residence for the owner to live in during the construction time. This type of structure is mostly observed in the Tier 1 cities. The creation of large real estate projects such as the residential or commercial complexes necessitates a significant investment. The developer may not be able to invest in the acquisition of the land for the project's development. As a result, cooperative development agreements have evolved for the development of significant real estate projects. In this situation, the landowner gives his land while the developer takes care of the development and the developer pays the landowners a consideration uh, for his contribution to the project's development. In such circumstances, the consideration is given not only in monetary terms, but also sharing developed units in the project according to the terms agreed upon. So how to structure the joint venture property agreement? A typical collaborative development agreement is typically constructed to include a number of financial components which are outlined as I'm going to mention here. 
contribution the pooling of respective resources by the landowners and the real estate developer is known as a joint development arrangement which can be shown as mr a owns a piece of property that might be converted into a residential or a commercial real estate project but he lacks the necessary knowledge and expertise in the project development and marketing so mr a works with mr b while lacking the financial resources to spend in land acquisition which accounts for a significant portion of the project's overall cost does have an experience skill and a reputation for project development and marketing so both mr a and b get into agreements to collaborate and contribute their respective resources the cost for the de development of a real estate project uh, must be incurred for obtaining various regulatory approvals such as, such as uh, the change of land use payment of external and internal development charges real estate construction cost marketing cost brokerage or commissions to the agents for the sale of the project and financial cost among others in most joint development agreements the developer bears all of these expenditures however there is no hard and fast rule to this concept and some of the aforementioned costs may be borne or shared by the landowner as well depending on the mutual terms agreed upon by the parties let's now look at what is a power of attorney there is normally no transfer of title from the landowner to the developer in a joint development agreement rather the land is given to the developer for the purpose of real estate development by the owner as a result the developer's title to the land is rarely transferred to him the landowner executes a power of attorney in favor of the developer transferring all developmental rights to the developer including the right of representation and getting approval from various regulatory agencies and hands over the control of the land for development and construction uh, for this purpose the power of attorney is executed furthermore the landowner executes a power of attorney in favor of the developer or his nominee for the marketing and sale of the project's developed units. The developer gets the right to transfer the ownership title deed and the developed unit, including the undivided portion of the land attached to the developed unit without acquiring the title of the land transferred in its name by a, by a way of execution of the conveyance deed, which is unique situation in a joint development agreements. According to the section 53A of the Transfer of Property Act 1882, the developer owns the land in most of the cases. Now let's talk about marketing. The developer is usually granted rights by a landowner to sell the project and collect the sale money from the buyers. The developer finances the project and pays the landowner the consideration by pre-launching it, entering into agreements with buyers for the constructed units in the project and obtaining an advance and subsequent construction link the payment from the customers. In some situations, the parties may agree to keep the sale proceeds in a joint account. Uh, which they will share in the agreed upon ratio. Now, while coming to the handing over uh, of the project, the landowner grants the developer a right in the nature of license to enter the plot of land for the purpose of development in a joint development agreement. So the essence of the joint development agreement is the transfer of land ownership for the purpose of performing a project construction and development. Furthermore, in most situations, the property is supplied not only for the development of the project, but also for other purposes such as selling the project's developed units to customers and transferring the ownership rights of the developed units to the customers. Revenue sharing also works in a way that the landowner may get the sale consideration for the land in a variety of ways depending on the parameters agreed upon by both parties, such as at the start, there is a refundable, non-refundable security advance money and at certain phases, a lump sum amount of money will be received. According to a mutually agreed upon ratio, a portion of the sale money is also shared. According to a mutually agreed upon ratio, constructed developed land will also be shared. Let's talk about the termination of an agreement. There may be several stipulations agreed upon by the parties regarding the project's fate and the payment, repayment of further consideration or compensation in the event of a breakdown or termination of the agreement. Well, now, this is just a brief info regarding the joint venture development of properties. If you are planning to develop any property in a joint venture, it is always advisable to take expert advice. Hope you enjoyed this session with when it comes to the joint development uh, arrangement. I will see you in my next video soon. See you.